So quick update on the Hampshire Mall. Um, so uh, just wanted to let everybody here know what, what little we think we know at this point. Um, and I, I believe there was an article that ran in the in the Gazette about this um, just uh, just recently. So uh, as you know, the Hampshire Mall did indeed go to foreclosure. The foreclosure auction was held and it turned out that the banks holding the mortgage, um, I believe Wells Fargo and Deutsche Bank, um, purchased the mall to, to basically take the property onto their own books um, at, to the tune of $7 million, uh, well below you know, market, market value, certainly assessed value. So uh, Pyramid is no longer part of the mall uh, operation. And Wells Fargo and Deutsche Bank hang, uh, I'm trying to think of it's a Spinoza real estate group, I think. Um, I think I've got the name right. So they hired a third party property manager to step in. Uh, we were able to reach out and make contact with the uh, interim property manager, a gentleman named Ian. Uh, and he indicated that at this point, you no, know, his marching orders are basically to make sure that the, the mall continues to operate um, in a safe and sound manner, take care of the tenants, uh, business as usual. And he said he couldn't really speak to any future plans uh, that the new owners might have, but that he, again, assumed he was interim and that they were looking for a full-time property manager, you know, likely somebody that would either relocate or, or somebody closer to the area that could take, take care of that. Um, he said, you know, again, in any limited conversations that he had had, he was not aware of any particular plans on the part of Wells Fargo or Deutsche Bank. And that for at least for the foreseeable future, uh, mall operations would continue as is. Um, so uh, the town administrator and I who were on the call with him just wanted to, you know, emphasize that this is a significant property uh, for the town of Hadley. And that certainly whatever the owner's plans were would be of uh, significant interest to us. And also let him know that if the new owners wanted to discuss, uh, you know, the current zoning, you know, with the planning board, you know, what the opportunities might be now or in the future with the possibility of zoning changes, uh, not guarantee, but possibility of zoning changes happening at that site. Um, we certainly thought that that would be of interest to them. Um, he agreed. He said he was very grateful for the outreach and would certainly pass that along. So, you know, again, it's it's not much, but at least we have a name and a contact and a dialogue has opened. Uh, so if there's anything further we find out, you know, from the town side, we'll certainly bring it back to the group or if any of, of you have any contacts and hear anything, would appreciate uh, that information being shared as well. I think that's good news because with new owners, it comes new beginnings. And since they're willing to keep everything as it is for now, it, it kind of gives a little stability for the Hadley Mall and, and the residents inside of the mall. You know, it's not like there's going to be a termination of a lease anytime soon for the stores. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree, Crystal. Okay, um, anything else on that front? If not, we can move along in the agenda. So uh, next order of business would be talking um, about the UMass project. So Tony, do you want to give us any update there? Um, as you know, as we know, uh, Steve Schreiber's class uh, that that he did with, on the architecture side, along with um, Ann Marshall, and then with uh, professors from landscape architecture and regional planning, um, that project has been completed, uh, which was to take taking a look at the Hampshire Mall site and re envisioning um, potential uses uh, that involved much more housing and. Uh, adaptive reuse uh, in that space. Uh, the uh, projects which were uh, unveiled on May 8th this uh, past semester uh, 
uh, are on display at Hampshire Mall. Of course, it, it has received quite a bit of press. Um, it's been talked about quite a bit uh, within uh, the context of some of the local blogs here uh, in Amherst. I don't know if, uh, you know, I haven't heard much in the way of the conversation going in Hadley, but uh, Steve Schreiber is interested in um, continuing uh, with uh, another project. Um, so he, there is um, some talk about potentially going back to the mall site or uh, with another group of students, or perhaps uh, speaking with this group again and you know, gauging the interest of, around what his students uh, in the next semester and the, and the landscape architecture students might uh, be able to help Hadley with. Uh, or, you know, just using another um, another location as a useful project for them. So so that's where we are right now. Um, I think more to come on whether or not uh, there's additional funding for a studio in uh, the springtime, but uh, that is being certainly being explored. Tony, wondering about and the I am, I am in, Go ahead. I'm sorry, Molly. So wondering about the possibilities of, of, of working with the university and maybe it's a, a slightly different group as well about, you know, when I, when I think about, um, again, what we don't have resources for <laughs> um, and, you know, trying to quantify economic impacts, you know, much, much like people making assertions about the, the schools, um, you know, and oh, if if we build certain housing stock, it's going to have this particular impact on the schools. You know, and that and those statements may have been true 25 years ago, right? But they aren't necessarily true today. Um, and even even very recently, I I heard a comment being made that you know everybody knows that if you build housing anywhere proximate to existing commercial property, that it actually pushes the commercial property out, that it, it it makes it less favorable for those commercial enterprises and they wind up uh, closing up shop. So that may or may not be true. I certainly have never seen any data to support that comment and thinking again, what a wonderful use if possible of university resources to help us actually separate fact from fiction on, on you know, um, you know, different types of uh, housing, density housing, you know, and, and what that does mean for the local economy in terms of positive impacts potentially on certain types of commercial, coffee shops, retail, restaurants, hotels. You know. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, to that question, Molly, and, and that thought about, you know, um, assessing economic impact there are a number of ways at this whether or not it, it becomes a student project through you know an academic exercise or working with the the donahue institute i i think and those are just two examples right um i i think the the real key here would be just to narrow the focus of of you know and and really clearly define the scope of what you all are looking for from a town perspective and whether or not, you know, this is something that we can debate or, you know, not even debate, but talk through it within this meeting at another time or, you know, how this might go through the planning board and or select board. Um, I, I leave that to you all um, as the government officials that that might know the best way to do that. But um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think all of these possibilities for partnership are open. We just have to, you know, kind of uh get a proposal and then figure out the funding okay. um the other thing for the group is uh, uh ann marshall did uh, she was finally able to share all of the student work the designs um that were done uh i received a, a link to a google drive for that uh, first week of july um I know the, the planning board, Bill, your planning board email address also received it. The files that are embedded in there, or shouldn't say embedded, but 
the files that are saved to that Google Drive are pretty large. So uh, I want to get those to the group, uh, but I just need to figure out a, an easy way to do that. So, you know, I may need to download that to something else that I can then give you a link to or um, so I'm just in the process of figuring that out. But that was something I think, you know, Crystal and, and some of the rest of you who weren't able to see the student work firsthand um, wanted to have access to it. So we do at least now finally have it. And, and I'll just figure out a way to to share that. We might um, just want to ask Anne if, if I'm, I'm sorry, Molly. Uh, Anne might be able to just offer that to everybody um, on the committee. Um, I, I wouldn't think that that would be too hard, just giving the, the, the um, yeah, that's all. I mean, she just would have to assign uh, permissions to for everyone to get into that box. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know she'd be amenable to that. So that's fine. I, I can, can reach out if you'd her. like. Yeah, I can give her everybody's email address. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you, Molly, because I know I asked you about some more information on it. So I really appreciate you getting this. Thank you. So in the um, in the meantime, uh, the all the student work is still posted at the mall outside in the hallway outside of Target. What used to be the uh, Buffalo Wild Wings lobby and the entrance to uh, what was the electronic store we had? Best in Buy. Best Buy. So in that alcove, uh, to, immediately to through the mall entrance is immediately to the right of the target entrance, or you can access it by going out from target to the mall, but everything is posted uh, there for some time to be determined. So maybe at a, a subsequent meeting, uh, yeah, our August meeting or whatever, we could do a little bit more brainstorming around what, Tony suggested as a group, you know, be thinking about where we think as a town we could utilize some outside assistance so that we can focus. Um, as narrow as Tony said, maybe kind of narrow uh, the scope of an ask from the university. I don't know if there's anything that's on anybody's mind right now that comes to mind. Okay, so, so we'll just keep keep this on an agenda. All right, uh, next on the agenda is an update on the SMART, uh, from the SMART Growth Committee that Justin is on. Unfortunately, Justin isn't able to be here tonight. So sorry, Bill, can you pinch hit a little bit on this one? A little bit. Uh, as you probably all know uh, a sub uh, an ad hoc working committee was formed. Uh, we just learned last week that the uh, grant funding we had from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission would not stretch quite as far as anticipated. But uh, Kyle Fennell from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission did suggest a another possible grant source. He scrambled to put the grant together. It's due by close of business Monday. Um, <clears throat> on Tuesday, the um, Affordable Housing Trust Fund met jointly with the planning board and both boards um, voted to support the application for the further grant funding. Uh, I went to the select board meeting last night and the select board voted to support the application for further grant funding. So that is going out. The, um, the process is such that the committee is going to go through the exercise of, uh, this, they'll be sending out a questionnaire, a, a link to that will be in the water bill that will be coming out for August 1st. Um, There'll be a QR code in that. Um, the um, committee is also planning some focus groups and uh, informational presentation, which <clears throat> seems like it may follow the lines of the informational presentation we were talking about doing. Um, 
a while back, and I think it'll be good to have it closer to the time this comes up for a vote. Um, so that's moving along. Um, it's still at a relatively conceptual level, and they are just starting to drill down into where it's going to be. All they've done so far is narrow the 40-yard district to uh, the Route 9 corridor between the rail trail and the Amherst Town line. Uh, I think it'll be trimmed quite a bit before um, we get um, to some to a bylaw. But uh, at this point, it, it, it seems it seems odd. But at this point, it's already getting tight to get it onto the Springtown meeting in May. Uh, so we may be looking at it for the Fall Town meeting in Oct uh, October of twenty five. But we shall see. Um, the committee is meeting twice a month, uh, which is a pretty, uh, that's, that's the same level of, uh, of meeting as the uh, select board and the, uh, the planning board. So, uh, they're really digging into it. Bill, can you, can you remind me what the zoning is at the, um, the, the old Hadley Village Barn Shops? Is that part of the over 55? That is part of the village center overlay district. Yeah. So all of Route 9, differing depths uh, on the north side up to the bike trail, on the south side down to Bay Road to a point, and then I think 500 feet south of Bay Road. Uh, but it is also the route, the business district between the bridge and Spruce Hill Road was designated as the Village Center Overlay District as well. And senior housing is allowed in the Village Center Overlay District. Okay, all right. That's what I was, somebody had asked me the other day and I said I was pretty sure over 55 was allowed, but then I wasn't sure. <laughs> it is, but just uh, not as ambitious as some people are thinking at the moment without Understood. further changes. Yeah. Understood. Okay. Um, does anybody have any other questions about the 40R or the, the Smart Growth Committee? No. All right, then. Um, next agenda item is affordable housing trust update. Um, as Bill mentioned, the committee did meet last night, I'm pretty singularly focused on, on the um, 40R uh, smart growth, getting an update, uh, getting an update on the Hampshire Mall. Um, but at this point, you know, there aren't any specific projects um, that the committee is discussing that would involve any sort of uh, monetary outlays. Um, the committee is committed to meeting on a quarterly basis at this point, um, which is a little bit more frequently than than we have been in the past. We might be getting something in from Valley CDC. Um, they are getting their financing package application together for the uh, the conversion of the uh, the hotel to um, affordable housing. And they will probably be approaching the town for a contribution to that end. Uh, Laura Baker emailed me. Uh, she didn't have a dollar amount attached to it. Um, so we'll we'll see what they ask for. And um, it'll, it'll initially come to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Uh, depending on what they ask for, it may also require some feedback from the uh, select board. Do we have any idea when this will start to be built as far as the housing for this Route 9? Well, let me see what she's, let me see what she had to say. Um, um, uh, do, 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 do.
with our 40B decision in hand, we are preparing to apply for financing from the state this fall for conversion of the Econo Lodge into permanent affordable housing. So the funding request will go in this fall, uh, which implies that work probably won't start in 2024. Um, I don't know the terms of the, uh, they had a lease arrangement with Craig's doors, Craig's door um, over the past fiscal year, we'll say. Um, I don't know how far that extends. Um, I don't know whether, they, they, I have no idea how long it will take to get their financing in order. Thank you, Bill. Um, and then, you know, the, the last topic we have, we're just really discussing any other pending projects that are in front of the planning board right now. So just wondering on the, on the status bill, I mean, is there, is there anything moving on the, um, I'm thinking of the going past the malls, the other end of town on the east side, anything with the uh, Howard Johnson property or anything in that area being discussed at this point? No, nope. uh, Howard Johnson's was approved for um, transition to medical, to a, to a general office building or primarily probably a medical office building. That's coming up on two years. Um, mm -hmm. And there's been no, Mo no movement there. The um, it's not Chase. The uh, Branch Bank. Um, I'm forgetting who who it is now. Uh, uh, the Branch Bank next to Trader Joe's is well under construction. Yeah, that's Chase. Chase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have heard. I've had inquiries from Bank of America. They. Uh, they want to be on the opposite corner. Uh, it's uh, presently uh, AT and T. It uh, was an optical shop for a while, and before that, the Potbelly Deli. So uh, that is uh, underway. And then uh, Dave's Hot Chicken is taking the People's Bank building, and. Uh, which is a lovely building, but they feel it looks too much like a bank. So they want to make it into a very uh, boxy building, uh, which looks a lot like the Chase building that's going up. So <laughs> they're, they're, they think they're not going to look like a bank, but they're going to look like a bank. Um, and uh, for some of you who have family of the certain demographic, uh, it appears uh, J. Crew is looking at uh, locating in Mountain Farms Mall. Yep. Probably in the Bed Bath & Beyond space. It's a pretty big space. And um, if you've noticed, uh, Eastern Mountain Sports seems to be having a going out of business sale. Mm-hmm which they say isn't a going out of business sale, but all sales are final. So yeah. Liquidating really quick. Yeah. Uh, although uh, they seem to be still well stocked. So uh, uh, by local. Uh, so do you have any idea, Bill, of when J crew is going to occupy that space? No. Okay. No, uh, we'll, because it's already permitted for retail, uh, mm -hmm. probably the only uh, permitting that will involve planning board is taking a look at their sign. Mm -hmm. uh, and that has not come in yet. Okay. And uh, we do have, uh, just had an application filed for uh, building a dental office on the corner of East Street and Route 9. That'll be across the street from uh, same south side of Route 9 across the street from East Hampton Savings. So I know everybody needs a dentist. I understand that. 
but is Hadley becoming like the dental office capital of Hampshire County or? I was going to say that there's already a couple of dentists here. <laughs> Why do we need more? So, uh, so the applicant is currently doing business in the, um, the little, uh, little strip mall in the South. The, it's the Meadows, right? At the Meadows? Yeah. Oh, Meadows. it's the same one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They, they are just, they are expanding. They have done very well, apparently. And uh, to meet demand, they, they have to expand. So. Um, All right. So re remember <laughs> that uh, zoning is not a scalpel. Uh, we don't get to say, oh, I like this, and no, I don't like your store. So uh, we are driven by market forces to some degree, and it is a business district, and if a business wants to locate there um, and can be a good neighbor, um, we really welcome them. Um, yes, how many dentists can you use? Uh, well, um, you know, it's one of those uh, build a better mouse trap and everyone will come to your door. Um, everybody wants to take a shot at it. So um, a lot of competition. That's what that's why I'm saying so many dentist offices. Are you really trying to make money or are you just trying to be a part of Hatley? <laughs> I think part of it is what I've heard from people who have expressed it variously is that uh, the uh, availability of on-site parking is a huge plus, especially if um, you have an aging patient load. Yeah. Um, and I noticed that about uh, 27 years ago, we relocated from Main Street in Northampton to the professional building next to the post office in Hadley. And um, of course, you never know what business you won't, you're not getting, what new business you're not getting. But um, I felt like we've lost very few of our clients who it would always be complaining about the difficulty of finding a parking place in Northampton. Uh, and our Northampton clients remain perfectly happy to drive across the bridge and park at our door. So uh, I think that's what's driving part of the, uh, the dental migration that it's, uh, it's convenient. Yeah, that's a good point. That is true, especially yeah. with an aging population. I didn't think about the parking issue, but that's true with the, the, the aging and the accessibility of parking in a small town. It's a big plus. It's a big plus with good business and nice dentists. But I think that that is all. Uh, uh, there are a couple of other things that are moving around. Uh, there's going to be a, a new uh, a new fitness business that is going to move into the former, um, I forget which pet company, it's not Petco, it was some something else, it was next to Stop and Shop. Yeah, that was Petco, you're right. That was Petco, okay. Yep. So that space is going to be subdivided, there'll be a, um, a fitness facility in there, and then uh, some of the other tenants, the nail salon, and h &R Block are moving further into that strip mall and Liquors 44 is going to expand into the h &R Block building. Yeah, well, it'd be nice to get rid of that storefront. It's been empty for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. good. So um, the, the economy is moving. Uh, the owners, uh, the, there are new owners for the Stop and Shop complex. And among other things, they are trying to develop the area out back. And there, we looked at a uh, proposal for uh, a large self storage facility back there. Mm -hmm. Sort of a tough site because there are wetlands constraints back there. And, um, but 
Uh, we did tell them that it would, would be zoned, could be zoned for a hotel or something of that nature, but they decided that self-storage made more sense for them economically. Yeah. But we have not actually seen an application for that yet. Okay. Um, does anybody have anything that they would like to talk about um, if it's not on tonight's agenda at a, at a future agenda? Um, I would like to know if anyone would like to come and talk about the housing um, and economic development um, with the CDEI the diversity, equity, inclusion, if you, if anyone would like to be a guest, just to, you know, update um, what's happening with the Econo Lodge, you know, it is uh, for lower income, you know, and something that Hadley is doing positive for the community. Mm -hmm. But just, just to throw the question out there. And you'd rather somebody from our committee or do you want somebody from the Valley CDC? It doesn't matter as long as someone can give us some information about what's happening. But I mean, I, to be honest, I would prefer if it was our committee, I think um, the Hadley viewers would be much more comfortable with someone that they can recognize than, than a, not a stranger, but someone they may not be able to um, see as they have their best interest instead of just, you know, Hadley seeing it. it. It's up to whomever, but I would prefer someone from the committee. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when do, when do they meet, uh, Crystal? We meet every third Thursday. Okay, so it's the same as this, but it's at seven o'clock, is that right? Seven o'clock, and it can be either Zoom or it can be in person. And then you're at the Senior Center in person? Yes, yes. I mean, I've been appointed chair, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to have more um, guests, as you may say, to give people, uh, our viewers, an insight of what's happening as far as the equity and inclusion in our town. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, guests coming in and speaking um, from their perspective can really assist with everyone else understanding what is on our plate and what we're doing for our town. Mm -hmm. So I did uh, come uh, a couple of years ago and the I just gave a talk on the impact of zoning and the fact that so much of Hadley's land is protected by APR that you drive by a field and you wonder why you can't put housing there. Um, multiple reasons. Um, right. That... Uh, I, I will try to uh, dig out. It, that was recorded, and Alex did um, get me the uh, the link to the recording, uh, which I'll be happy to send to you. I, I don't think you were on the committee at that time, mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I think it's it's fine. We're all happy to talk about this. Uh, maybe just narrow it down a little bit as to what specifically you're interested in hearing about. Um, yeah. I'm not sure that Jay Crew has much uh, uh, diversity yeah. <laughs> impact, but yeah. uh, you know, I can, I can do a version of what I just did or, um, or you want to emphasize more on what uh, uh, the Econo Lodge, we can, um, I can, if nothing else, I can talk with Laura Baker and get some more details about what she's doing. Yes, that's that's what I would want the the focus to kind of be on um, the Econo Lodge because it was a battle getting here, and we finally did. So I just want people to understand that you know the town is accepting of new changes, and you know everything is rolling along. In case people do not know what's happening on the agenda or if the Econo Lodge project is still going on. Yep, so um, we can definitely coordinate, coordinate that, Crystal, happy to. Thank you. 
I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I thought about, and I, I know we talked about this, but I can't remember if we talked about it on the committee or if I just talked to Bill about it, but I was, was thinking about um, trying to get a better understanding, you know, and uh, Bill, you just jogged my memory with your comment about people driving by fields and wondering why that they're not prime, you know, real estate construction. Um, at one point we were, I think we all know that Hadley has more protected land um, than any other municipality in the, in the Commonwealth or, you know, we sort of right up there. And so that begs the other question, which is what what isn't protected, right? How and I, Bill, I think you and I were talking about that at one point, like trying to educate people um, on what is not in APR. And is that something? I mean, where's the best place to get that information? Is that something that that you can? derived from the maps that you're working with or, or the assessor's office or? There is an appendix to the master plan update mm -hmm. that is a, a map of development constraints, okay. which includes APR <laughs> land, municipal land, wetlands and slopes. Is that something that would you be willing to review this that with us? Because I know there's been additional land put into APR even after that update. Right. It has not been updated for that. But, right. But yes, we do have. Uh, I just uh, had just talked with um, the state about this because uh, I wanted to get some more information for. Uh, uh, Mark Dunn's committee, okay. and um, we have approximately 3,474.7 acres of APR land in Hadley, which makes us number one for participation in the state. In and that's... And that's not relative to size, that's just pure acreage. Right? That's pure acreage. Yep. Mm -hmm. So wonderful thing to be proud of. Yeah. Yep, for sure. But again, you know, just people understanding that also has an impact on, on uh, increasing the tax base, right? Because that would be something that would be something to talk about as well mm -hmm. the availability of the land and why why Hadley can only do but so much mm -hmm. you know that a lot of people don't understand that or realize that and that's that's a great thing to bring up as well Molly you never know now this this master plan update is that for the public bill yes it's on the uh, it's on the town website oh okay and uh, it's on the planning board page on the town website, but I think it's also on the main page under documents or some such. Okay. But it is readily available. I should put a counter on it to see how many people actually look at it. I've read it. Cover to cover, Bill. <laughs> That was pretty quick. <laughs> okay, anything else anybody uh, would like to have added? Okay, so if not, um, then our next meeting is going to be the third Thursday in August, which is, if I can get a calendar out here. Um, okay. The 15th. It looks like August 15th. Yep. Um, I'm on vacation that week, but um, I can plan around that since we're on Zoom. You can always dial in or uh, do that meeting. So, uh, you know, unless I find out ahead of time that we're not going to be able to make quorum, you know, because again, the summers are always tough. 
um, everybody should plan on that that date. I know I won't be here because of uh, they're doing a safety event in Northampton at the Walmart at that time, and the oh, bank okay. is participating. Okay. Yeah, I I also have a conflict that time, unfortunately, just to be transparent. Okay. All right. I'll shoot an email um, around on that. And then, you know, either we'll wind up skipping August or we can uh, find an alternate date, you know, whatever anybody would like. Sounds good to me. All righty. But anybody, uh, if there's nothing else, anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. There we go. Second. All Thank right. you, everybody. Have a nice okay. weekend and be cool. Okay. And uh, what? Roll call vote for the adjournment, Bill? Yes. Oh. All right. Emma? All right. E? Yep. Crystal? Yes. Amy? Yes. And me as well. Tony, thanks Tony. for coming. Did and you say Tony? Oh, yeah, he I'm doesn't get voting. to vote. I, I, I oh, can't that's even right. Call I'm that. sorry. I can't even close the meeting. So <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a great, great uh, night and then the rest of the summer too. <laughs>